uh, with, uh, we have already discussed uh, about publishing our the, publishing the to dos of our core team, and as part of that, uh, we have already uh, shared the one with the developers community yesterday. So Scott, uh, do you want to say something about uh, like publishing and being more open to the community and sharing our uh, the to do what we have already done and what we are going to do in the future? Yeah, thanks. Um, so, yeah, we we talked uh, at the last office hours back in July about this core team wanting to be more open and bring our discussions out to the community long before they're decided so that the community can be part of that process, um, provide some transparency and uh, some insight into what's going on and basically kind of tear down that that wall that where people think that that core is is acting in, in secret and unilaterally and and all that. So um, so this is one of the things that, that we wanted to try doing is take our agenda for our, our biweekly or monthly meetings and publish that um, long before the the official uh, monthly quarter report goes out uh, so that people can can see what's going on, you know, a little more real time than just the core reports. So um, with that said, you know, there's a lot of stuff on here, things that we're still working on, things that we've completed. Um, I don't, don't know if I should go through everything line by line. Um, I can kind of go through some of the highlights. That, and there is stuff on here that, or there is stuff that we've been talking about that's not on here because, you know, occasionally we do get uh, items that uh, deal with uh, conflicts between developers or, sens you know, other sensitive items that we don't want to disclose right away until they've been resolved, until all parties have had a chance to, uh, to, to address things. So, um, yeah, you know, this is not completely um, everything that we're working on, but this is, this is a good window into it. Um, we'll talk some more about, so one of the big things we've been working on um, is things like Git. Uh, other people will talk more about that later. Um, another thing that we're working on, I actually don't see it on here, but we'll talk a little bit about it, is um, things like CI and um, working on modernizing the, uh, the the build and release process. We've been working very closely with Lee Wen and um, with Glenn Barber on this. We've had several meetings with them and with uh, their teams in the last few weeks to talk about how we can make CI be more central to the project. Um, you know, we want to look at things like, um, you know, can we use CI to do reproducible release builds? And what are the challenges there are things like, um, you know, it's not enough just to take the make release script and run it in Jenkins. You know, we need to break things down into smaller pieces. We need to address things like being able to sign releases before they're uploaded. So that kind of stuff has been has been discussed. Um, we're also taking a big look at things like uh, QA pipelines and ultimately try and have a pipeline through Jenkins and uh, Fabricator or um, uh, Jira or something like that that allows people to basically create pull requests, have their code be automatically compiled, automatically QA'd against something like QA or um, the uh, ZFS test suite or something like that, um, and then be be put up for, for a merge request. And um, yeah, so, you know, it's, it's interesting stuff. It's more, it's more modern workflow that we're looking at. Um, Want to get this done for uh, something that we can we can start doing in the 13 release time frame so that uh, it can help take some workload off of the RE team if they can have CI already running and already checking commits for them for uh, MFCs into 13 that should help their workflow um, and ultimately we want, we want it to be a tool that can be um, virtualized and any developer can, can run their own CI pipeline any development team at, at a company can, can adopt it for their own uh, internal releases um, so that kind of thing um, so kind of side branch there into, uh, release stuff and CI, but, uh, but back to just the overall agenda. Um, like I said, I don't want to go through everything one at a time. It's more kind of open for people to comment and think on, uh, when we open up the floor for questions, uh, here in a little bit, if people see stuff on the agenda that they want to talk about, they're willing, that they're welcome to ask. Um, and in case you don't know what I'm talking about, uh, 
the uh, Moen, the, our, our secretary emailed this out yesterday to developer list. It's called the coursing agenda is the title. Um, so yeah, just take a look at your email, take a look at that. And if there's anything you want to talk about with the uh, team while we're here, uh, please do. So that's it for me, thanks. Thanks, Scott. Uh, I think we have a, a small request about introducing our core team to the uh, to uh, the community. So I'd just uh, like to request everyone to have a short, share a short biography of everyone to just introduce yourself. So I'll start with uh, Ed. Sure, I'm. I'm Ed Mast. Uh, Oh, wait a second here. Um, this is not going to work. Uh, let's go to someone else for a second. And okay. uh, I'll move to our I'll get back to Ed shortly. Warner, can you just introduce yourself for a short? Yeah, my name is Warner Walsh. I've been involved in the project for a while. Um, this is my second core term in a row and will be my last core term for a little while. Uh, I'm working uh, with Ed on getting Git landed and uh, looking at different ways to document and publicize that uh, better now that we've got um, a bit of a plan. We'll talk about that a little bit later today. Um, in addition to doing kernel stuff and user land stuff and build stuff and uh, some conduct stuff that I'm uh, handing off to others. So that's me. Ed, are you okay? Yeah, okay. I just I'm uh, I'm running the stream from my FreeBSD laptop and had the audio plugged into to there, so I had some uh, uh, really terrible feedback when I started speaking. Um, so I'm Ed Mast. I've uh, been on the core team uh, two times and then was off the the previous one, the the tenth uh, core team, uh, and ran again. Um, this time I, I like the. Um, uh, the model that several um, several long running core members have uh, proposed or kind of advocated for the um, you know not just, uh, uh, essentially uh, self imposed term limits uh, so I'm I'm a big fan of that um, I've been a FreeBSD committer since 2005 or so started using it a little bit before that um, was working at a company that built a product on FreeBSD for about a decade or so and, and was running the team um, there that built and uh, and modified and and improved uh, and bug fixed and things for BSD and made changes for their own internal use. Um, and then more recently, I after leaving there, I was doing some contract and consulting work for a little bit um, and most recently have been spending uh, much of my time working with the FreeBSD Foundation, managing the uh, funded projects that we take on. So either um, directly through staff members um, on an ongoing basis or individual um, individual point projects that are, are funded to uh, to develop some specific uh, feature or, um, or, you know, improvement or, or whatever the case might be. Okay, next. Uh, thank you, Ed. Uh, so Scott, can you please introduce yourself? Yeah, so I'm Scott Long. Um, this is uh, my first time on Core in a very long time. I've been with the project since uh, Committer since 19 or 2000. I've uh, been a FreeBSD user since 1993, and um, I was release engineer for the project from 2001 to 2006 or seven, something like that. Um, and yeah, I work on storage stuff, kernel stuff. Um, and I work for Intel right now. I used to work for Netflix and Yahoo before that. Thanks, Scott. Mark, can you please introduce yourself? Hello, um, I'm Mark. Uh, this is my this is my first term on Core. I've been a developer since um, I think 2013 or so, <clears throat> and since then I've worked for a few uh, FreeBSD based appliance vendors. Uh, and more recently, I've been uh, working on contract for the FreeBSD Foundation and for a few a few companies that uh, build things on FreeBSD. Um, so I, I, I joined Core because I'm interested in, in a few different areas. Um, one that Scott already touched on was CI, especially uh, pre-commit CI, so that um, it'll be easier for 
occasional contributors to submit patches and actually have a chance of clearing the process. Um, right now, you're, you're kind of at the mercy of uh, committers to actually take and test your patches and verify that everything's good. And I think more automation uh, around that process will definitely will definitely help, as with the conversion to Git. Um, so that that's an area I'm pretty interested in. And uh, uh, I'm also quite interested in, in working with the, the Bugmeister team and with our, our general handling of bug reports from users. Um, and more generally, uh, working with, with vendors that have specific requirements of FreeBSD and trying to, uh, trying to uh, adopt them to the community. Thanks, Mark. George, can you please introduce yourself? Hi, I'm George Neville-Neal. Uh, this is my first term back on Core. I've been on Core before, but as I mentioned, many of us term limit ourselves off so that we get a break. Um, my interests this time around are related to CI, but mostly in the QA and test area, um, so that we can improve our testing. Um, when I'm working on FreeBSD, I spend most of my time in the network stack, um, and I spend a good deal of time writing and teaching about FreeBSD. Thanks, George. Sean, can you please introduce yourself? Howdy. Um, Sean Jitt, I've been around the project for a while. Um, currently, mostly interested in um, the CI and workflow element of things, so both developer productivity, um, tooling, and then uh, specifically as it relates to companies being able to leverage and use FreeBSD as a platform for commercial purposes. So, Thanks, Sean. And here I am, Muin, uh, working for, uh, temporarily at the core team secretary. So I have been working with FreeBSD since uh, early 2000s, maybe. Uh, 2005 is when I started submitting patches, and in 2014, I got my course commit bit. Uh, right now, I'm working as the core secretary. Beside us, uh, there are three more team members, that is Zach Darosin, and Kyle Evans, and uh, Hiroki Sun, uh, who are not present in this meeting, but hopefully they'll be present in uh, another office hours. So uh, that's the basic introduction from us. So now we will move towards uh, some updates for the Git working group and the Git transition from SVN. As you already know, that we are moving away from subversion and moving towards for a Git uh, SVN system. So uh, I'll request uh, Ed to discuss something about it and like where uh, what is the kind of status of Git transition and like when can we have a date or something like solid date when we can move towards Git as a source of truth. Or what is the update on uh, like what's going to be the client system for the page? So these sort of things. Ed, can you please discuss about this? Sure. Uh, Warner will also have uh, a few things to say on on this topic. Uh, I'm sure. Um, so uh, as as I hope folks are aware um, by this point, um, the previous core team, um, based on feedback from developer surveys and uh, FreeBSD end user surveys um, that expressed an overwhelming um, preference for using um, using Git as the uh, canonical repository um, decided that that uh, uh, that we should uh, uh, transition from subversion to Git as the the canonical repo and um, I've been working on um, on a lot of uh, Git related things um, leading up to that anyway. So uh, I started um, from under the you know the direction of the previous core team. Um, started looking at trying to figure out how we would would do that, and it has been a um, a long slog to get things uh, into place um, in order to to be able to to do that. We are in a pretty good uh, position now um, through an, a lot of work on the part of um, uh, Uli uh, Ulrich Sporline, um, who has managed our subversion to Git um, uh, converter. Um, that's that's currently running the the mirror that's available on GitHub, um, and there's been quite a few bumps uh, along the way because there's been some inconsistent metadata and other um, slight problems uh, in 
uh, in the subversion data itself that we're starting from. Uh, Warner, do you want to comment on that briefly? Um, yeah, we we have a very complicated mirroring structure, and different mirrors have run different versions. We're set up in different ways, and we noticed that there was some metadata difference between the different mirrors, and um, Trying to figure out, is it just metadata? Is it something else? Is it something more serious? Um, we wanted to get to the bottom of it before we kept going. We could have probably just said, oh, yeah, whatever, and just yeeted something out. Um, but we wanted to make sure there wasn't uh, anything more serious involved and to understand how the situation came to be. And we, we've done that. and. Um, Uli's um, back on to uh, uh, moving forward with that. Um, he's got a good um, mirror, and he'll probably produce a final repo that has um, the metadata corrected. No one repo has everything correct, evidently. And so he's stitching them together so that we have that, and he'll publish that. So anybody that wants to could potentially reproduce uh, the repository as well. So. Um, and I guess the other other thing we should mention is um, you put put together a um, good blog post that explains um, more of the background uh, around why uh, the transition is happening in the first place. So we should right. um, probably reference that and uh, um, maybe if there's anything specific from it you wanted to highlight. I um, I posted it into the IRC channel that uh, we have, as well as a video that I put together on kind of the basic differences between Subversion and Git, kind of as it relates to the project. Uh, and there's a lot of them, but you know, this, this gives you a quick overview. Um, and there'll be additional videos uh, and blog posts coming soon. Basically, we'll be using the, I'll be blogging out the different how-tos that we need. Hey, I'm a FreeBSD user and what's this new Git thing? How do I track FreeBSD? Um, I'm a developer, how does my workflow change? I'm a serious developer doing a lot of stuff. How does it change? Um, hey, I'm a company using FreeBSD. How do I integrate it with Git now? Uh, so those different things will be initially blogs on, uh, on, on my blog that I'll share widely in the community. Um, people have commented on the different things I've done so far, and so I've been able to improve what we've got. Um, we'll use that to produce a set of markdown docs, which will then go into the handbook once we convert that to markdown, unless somebody wants to convert it back to docbook. Um, Sean will ASCII talk doc. about that. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I'm doing them in ASCII doc. <laughs> they're, they're, yeah, basically they the, they're basically the same thing. There's a couple minor differences. Um, Doing them in Markdown initially also lets us, uh, there's several Markdown sharing tools that let us collaborate and make things better. Um, so the other thing to add uh, that we've not talked about is we are also planning for the stable 11 and stable 12 branches, publishing those in Subversion. We'll keep the Subversion repository running after the cutoff. And all but all development will go into Git. Um, so you, as a developer, you'd push things to the main branch in Git, do an MFC, you do that in Git, do stuff for releases, you do that in Git. But um, we'll be publishing the 11 and 12 branches for the project supported life of the branches into the Subversion repository. It turns out to be relatively easy to do. Um, I have that running in the background on one of my systems. I'll be transitioning that to the project um servers to make sure that's all working part of this uh, one of the things we heard from different people using um uh freebsd was uh, it's kind of a big change in the middle of a project we'll have to change a lot of tooling and we're not sure what timeline we can do that on and we thought that would be the easiest way to um have a nice controlled transition if you want to do current you got to go to git the bleeding edge is always the bleeding edge we don't always make it uh, pleasant, uh, but we try to as much as we can. This will be one time when we can't. Uh, but for the stable branches, we said we you can get stuff from Git this way, and we'll do that. Um, we've figured out that uh, FreeBSD update and those uh, related things will continue. 
port snap, uh, I think, is on the path to deprecation. Where that winds up relative to this transition um, and the Git cut over and the details are still being worked out. So we can't, we don't know yet, so we can't really share, but we'll have a, a story for that um, as well. One of the other things is phase one is designed to be um, subversion using Git. And that, that is kind of lame. And we, we understand it's kind of lame, but it's the problem, part of the problem that's solvable. And it's also the pro part of the problem that um, we think will help the developers transition to Git as we then improve the workflow. Yes, Moen, you were, uh, you're still muted, Moen. Oh, I think he left. <laughs> I think we lost <laughs> our secretary. Back. We'll add him back in it. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we've been trying. Um, this, this is kind of the highlights. Ed and I want to do a, um, a more detailed deep dive into this, but that's kind of the high level details of the stuff we've been working on to, to make this transition a uh, smooth transition for everybody so that um, there's, there's going to be bumps, but we've tried to anticipate the bigger ones and smooth them over before we go through it. Yeah, I guess the one other thing I'll mention about the uh, actual conversion process and getting the, the converter running. Uh, so the um, the new version of the con of the SVN to Git conversion is available um, on cgit betafreebsdorg as has been uh, mentioned in a few spots. When Uli first stood that up, um, we were basically, as we would iterate on fixing uh, problems in the converter itself, he would just um just rerun it and push new uh new conversions out as they happened um and so it was it was um useful for us as we were iterating on fixing the the issues in the converter but it meant that anyone trying to experiment with or track the conversion on a as a downstream would run into trouble because it um the hashes would be changing on a on a regular basis um we've gone uh since then to iterating on a two-week cadence so on a uh on a, on a sunday basically if there are changes in the conversion process itself um then we'll we'll spin the hashes on on a sunday and you'll have a, a two weeks or or more um, of a stable repository to to build things on um, the steps from here uh there's a few outstanding tasks um as far as getting uh, the commit hooks and repository access controls and such into place um, and some documentation that is uh, in progress. Um, coincident with that, we're getting ready to do a dry run of the conversion process. So we're going to um, we're going to take a snapshot of the subversion repository, repository um, stand up the uh, the git conversion, open it up for developers to make test commits uh, to, to make sure that all of the access and, and commit hooks and everything work. Um, for the dry run, those will be, um, it'll be basically a sandbox play repository. Um, so, you know, we'll encourage uh, developers to make sure things work, but those commits will, will disappear um, before we do the final uh, for real conversion. Um, which will use the same exact same tooling and approach, but will will basically happen from this uh, the subversion repository. So the dry run uh, will not change subversion as the the canonical source of truth repo. Um, it'll just be basically making sure that we're ready to to do that uh, some weeks later. Okay. Yeah. Uh, for now, I will just. Uh, have a break with this topic and we'll just go on another topic as Sean needs to leave earlier. Sean, can you please uh, discuss about some of the upcoming changes in the docs tree? Like uh, we are, we know that we are moving forward from dog book to ASCII docs and uh, the static site. So well, what do you, do you have any updates on that and like how it's going to change our new, uh, new uh, doc mechanism? Yeah, so um, one of the things that was, um, so a lot happened in, in Core 10. One of the things that came out of that was um, we also spun off a thread um, to go begin exploring the deprecation and removal of DocBook and what would that look like. Um, I know everybody's going to shed a tear over SGML. Um, it was nice for in many ways because it, it has um, really good explicit handling, but it's effectively arcane. The tooling's arcane. 
And nobody really likes working in that environment because of the tooling for all intents and purposes. Um, and the rest of the internet has effectively moved on to either Markdown or to ASCII doc or other things like that. Uh, Markdown is definitely the most popular uh, language, uh, markup language, uh, but it leaves a lot to be desired. Um, I'm actually, let's see if I can do this real quick. Um, um, we're creating a, similar to what we're doing with, um, what we're doing with Git, where we're doing an SVN implementation in Git, the first um, first approach and phase to all of this is going to be um, doing a ASCII doc implementation of our doc book stuff in um, an ASCII doc implementation of our current SGML books. That's what I meant to say. Um, sorry, I'm trying to do two things at once. And a uh, window. Here we go. Oh, it's not going to let me. I'm on a new laptop. I need to go and do my permission settings, which is not going to happen right now. Um, okay. Um, so I'll drop a link into the Zoom chat. Did this, did I get cut off? No, we can hear. Okay, great. Um, um, I'll drop, drop a chat link to, to the existing work. There you go. <laughs> um, and um, um, so we're very excited about that. It's actually the point now where the thing that we're bickering over or bickering over is the wrong word, but like this, it's one of the iterations that's going on right now is how do we keep the actual chapter, you know, 2.1, 2.2 kind of um, um, format. Um, otherwise, if somebody else can screen share, actually, maybe this uh, this is useful, powerful enough, et cetera. Um, there's the link for folks to kind of click on real quick. Um, if somebody can drop that into the IRC channel. Um, the work is happening in Slack in the WG Git 19 channel. Or I'm sorry, Git uh, WG Doc 19 channel, um, and very very excited. A uh, big shout out to Sergio um, and uh, for for you know taking that or gra grabbing that and running with it. Um, just this last weekend, he did a massive code drop um, and. Um, yeah, so if you go to GitHub, uh, github.com slash previous D slash doc ng, that's where the repo is for that as well. Um, so very excited about that. Um, it's not finalized, finalized yet, but um, we're real close to being there. Um, so um, at that point, we can pour one out for doc book. Here we go. It looks like DocBook, except for if you click on the second link that I, I tossed there, you can see very clearly that, or not very clearly, but you can see that this came from, um, um, uh, we've got, this is hosted on, on uh, Sergio's GitLab, but um, he's actually has pushed this all over to GitHub um, and is available there. So some of the changes there is like, you know, the chapter, it's 2.1 is the way that it's done in Markdown. I'm sorry, DocBook. And right now, there's something in the way that this is rendering out. So, um, work in progress. We're almost there. This should lower the barrier to entry for people contributing, especially because this will be able to go through a normal pull request, um, iterative workflow model with publishing that's done on demand. All kinds of real neat neat stuff is coming from this. And then we can begin to go and iterate and move from the very dated, like if you go back in a time machine, um, you know, very dated uh, styling sheets that we have, which has served us well, but um, we could probably go and revise and edit some of the stuff, which effectively nobody wanted to do when it was in and um, to deal with flow objects and stuff like that. So um, happy to answer questions about that, but very excited to see this work um, coming to fruition. Huge, huge, huge shout out. John. Yeah. Um, Will this make it easier for us to update the content as well as the style? Um, I see we yes. have Spark 64 still listed here. That's I, not <laughs> completely relevant. <laughs> uh, haven't we taken a hatchet to that? Um, so uh, we, we, we have. I think he started with an older version of our thing exactly to give right. a snapshot. Yeah, so there's translations that is a big part of this that is support, uh, a supported part of the workflow. Um, um, and yeah, the, the, this is very simple to, to edit by comparison. If you look at, um, let's see, if you go look at, let me go and pull out an actual link here. Um, you can see editing docs here is 
a whole lot. Uh, this is going to be, this is also a link to the, oops, I just, sorry, I didn't push enter on that. Um, there you go. Um, sorry, I thought I pushed on the, uh, the link there, but uh, if you can pull that one up, you'll see. Um, it looks like, something that's that resembles markdown almost um it's very plain text friendly um and you know you don't have to have closing tags for everything so, Sean, so there's there's the three lines that you need to nuke yeah a uh, really quick question i don't know if anyone's asked this because i can't see the other questions but <clears throat> um how is all of this stuff with utf-8 for a cjk language? Uh, uh, UTF-8, I know, works CJKE, or uh, I forget what that one is um, off the top of my head. But yes, I don't know what the scoop is there. I know that you can render this out from right to left and other things like that. I don't know that we've experimented with that at all or not, but we're not going to make that a blocker to begin with. But if people are interested in applying effort to that, then yes, they can. Um, well, I do believe the tooling supports that. I mean, we do have translations into both forms of Chinese characters, Japanese and Korean. So. Yep. I'm just wondering if anyone's tried to run a conversion on that yet. Um, I believe we did a sm some smoke tests on that, but we haven't done much more than that. Um, I know that in prior lives, uh, Korean was a very important language, and we did successfully run with their uh, with translations for that particular language. So I'm pretty confident that the rest of this will also just work. OK, cool. Thanks. Volunteers welcome. If you're volunteering, there you go. I love a volunteer. Sure, I'll I'll do the Korean translation. That'll work out really well. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> the only Asian language I don't know. Okay, thanks, Sean, for the update. Uh, now we'll uh, go back to the Git transition discussion we were having with uh, one around Ed. So uh, it was uh, discussing about the incremental. Uh, uh, a revision ID of uh, Git. So now uh, I just want to ask, like, have we planned any hard lines, like when you are going to uh, ship from subversion to Git, or do you have any planned dates? Um, I'll I'll try to address that. Um, we're doing a dry run, dry run this week. Um, Books has got all the repo issues, source of data issues uh, resolved. And he should be doing the run dry run this week. If that goes well, we'll do the actual dry run in two weeks and then the cut over two weeks after that. So around the around Halloween um, for a switch. This will also give us about five weeks, six weeks to get the documentation squared away. We hope to have most of it in place um, for the dry run um, in a couple weeks. We have bits and pieces, um, just needs to be stitched together. Uh, we'll also try to schedule for October a Git um, town hall. Uh, Ed and I will host that. Um, maybe Ux can attend depending on how um, uh, time zones and stuff. He's, he's in Europe. And um, so uh, we'll do that. I don't think there's much else to add. Did I miss anything, Ed? I think that's uh, that's mostly it. Um, I guess, uh, yeah, there were a couple of good questions um, in the IRC channel as well that um, you know I think we will um, will address uh, uh, in the town hall and or in in further updates on the FreeBSD dash Git mailing list. I. I Definitely encourage anyone who is interested in um, in trying things uh, as we go along in subscribing to that mailing list. We'll post updates to FreeBSD Current and, and the other kind of usual announced places when there is significant um, information for that people need to be aware of. But if you're interested in, in following along um, in with the details, uh, definitely join the FreeBSD Git list. And, and we'll start posting um, a note. Our, we have a weekly meeting, and we'll post notes or a summary of the notes um, to uh, get uh, FreeBSD get at FreeBSD.org. 
as well as the meeting location, just to keep people abreast at the nuts and bolts and details that are coming up. You know, we'll be talking about different um, <clears throat> rules we need, different commit hooks um, we need, all that sort of thing. Um, the only other question that came up on IRC was, um, what's our hosting plan? And for phase one, the hosting plan is we'll host it ourselves um, to keep control of the repository inside the project. Um, we'll mirror it to GitHub and GitLab. They have great CI tool um, pipelines that you, we can set up. We set up a couple already. We'll set up more. Um, we'll continue to leverage that. Um, in the future, um, we will uh, you know, add additional tooling as we need. Uh, we haven't figured you know, all the, any of the phase two stuff out yet. Um, if you're interested in driving that, helping with that, um, we would love to have you at FreeBSD Git um, at freebsd.org uh, as well, because that's where, once we do the transition and once we're over the bumps and, you know, the initial problems that we weren't able to catch, we'll be transitioning to how can we now leverage Git to um, have more CI, do other teams need to do work? Um, you know, all of those sorts of things will be done there. And we'll get into that, I think, a little bit more in our town hall as well. So, thanks, Warner. Uh, yes, yeah, sorry. Sorry to interrupt. Please continue. No, 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 I was just saying I was done. Okay. Uh, so at this point, Ed or one, uh, is there anything you want to uh, advise for the developers community, like uh, they should be aware of, like uh, they should take into any safety measures for uh, committing or anything else, or like is there any uh, like what should be they be aware of? I know that they should be profit, get more proficient with Git over SVN uh, because SVN has been in our uh, project for for long. So any advice on that? I would say the, the thing to do right now is to uh, make sure that you have um, Git installed. Um, try cloning the cgit-beta repository um, and building from from there. Um, try making a local change just to make sure that uh, you've picked up all of the kind of um, basic uh, operation. Um, the FreeBS, we have a um, in-progress version of the subversion primer that's that's in the developer's handbook translated to Git, um, it's it's undergoing some kind of active um, uh, active editing and uh, updates. Um, it, it started out as a direct translation from um, from subversion to Git, and we're trying to kind of uh, trying to change it a little bit more to be um, Git first, um, like. Basically written as if um, uh, as if you were starting from uh, the perspective of using Git. There are some some real there are a lot of uh, really good kind of introductory Git tutorials as well as the the Git um, the Git book that is referenced from the the Quick Start Guide. Um, the the Git Primer um, is a good place to to review and read that stuff. Yeah, that's one of the documents we want to have ready to go in the next couple of weeks. Um, one of the things that I've been doing is I've been going through it and trying to make it more of a kind of use case focused, you know, the different use cases I ran through earlier. Um, you could read through that. Oh, I'm this type of user. I need to know these things. Oh, I don't understand this part of the, the um, little guide here. Oh, there's a link to a more detailed explanation either in the Git book or some other blog that I found that was particularly useful in helping people understand things. So that the document itself is focused and doesn't get sidetracked on talking about, um, you know, what a revision is, you know, we don't need to explain that to people. Um, what branches are, we don't need to explain that much to people. There's a little bit in there, but not much. If you need to know more, it's, you know, in, um, resources that other people are maintaining, that other people have written, that are much better writers than I am. So um, we're, we're hoping to have that kind of blended approach. The SVN primer tried to be everything and, and kind of overstretched a little bit in places and underexplained in others and was kind of awkward to use. And we're hoping to avoid some of that as well um, in 
uh, what we produce. Um, I'll be publishing drafts to the uh, of that <clears throat> um, late this week, early next week in Git uh, at freebsd.org. Um, also, uh, there'll probably be um, the next of uh, the blog posts and videos released later this week. I'll send a pointer to those um, there as well. And definitely uh, keep questions, comments, and concerns uh, coming. The uh, I think at this point we expect that the transition should be quite straightforward um, for all of the use cases um, that we've been able to anticipate. Uh, and ex uh, for example, the the question um, about uh, Poudrier and using Git here instead um, that was in the IRC channel that should be a a straightforward transition. Um, it's gets already supported, and it's it's just a configuration change. But it does highlight um, the, the to us the need to have kind of specific task focused documentation. So Warner and I um, and everyone else who has been involved um, has come at it from generally speaking from the perspective of a ports developer or a source developer or a docs developer um, and there are um, the, the sort of context that uh, someone who isn't a developer but is just building ports on their system but using Subversion today as the the source for their uh, either base system or ports trees, um, you know, the, the context um, that they would have, we might have, have missed. So it's, it's, definitely, uh, it's definitely good for us to hear that and uh, make sure that we have, uh, you know, a, a, a one-page doc that says, all I do is is use Poudrier to build um, out of Subversion, Ports Tree, and Source Tree, um, and then it's just you know here's three or four steps that uh, just do this, this, and this, and then you can use our Git our Git repo instead. Yeah, and I'll, um, the the next one up on that is I'm just a FreeBSD user. We ha we have that one written, um, and I'll be posting that to the the Git um, mailing list. Um, later in the week, I'm going to see if I can find the current draft and see if it's ready to share in the IRC channel while the rest of the um, our agenda is being gone through. Oh, Moin, you're muted. Uh, thanks, Ed. Thanks, Warner. Uh, I think uh, as we are going to uh, transition from this, so definitely there is a cutoff. A time like when the all sort of uh, uh, commit to, towards the SVN tree has been off and you move towards Git. So there's a transition time, like maybe one or two days, or I don't know, like what you have planned for. So uh, how long will the code slash will take effect? And like, is it going to by any chance hamper any of our releases? Uh, so the cutover will be a flag day. We will turn off Subversion, uh, run the last final conversion. It takes a few hours. Um, we'll switch to Git. Subversion will be read-only, except for the publishing I talked about earlier. Um, <clears throat> one of the nice things about publishing everything to Subversion is that uh, the releases potentially could be built out of Subversion or Git. We don't care um, with this plan. Um, I believe Glenn is going to build them out of Git, but if there's something wrong with that, some versions there is a fallback, so there should be no uh, impact on releases. Um, if you're tracking current, there'll be an impact, and we'll make sure to announce that well in advance um, and do whatever we can to help ease the transition. If we can put any messages in places that are useful, um, like create a file saying, Subversion is done, move to Git, so that when people grab it, they see it, something like that. I don't know, we'll, but we'll, we'll make sure that, um, you know, it's it's clear what you should do and when you should do it. Warner, um, I guess the Subversion tree will basically be just made read only at some point when we do the transition, right? Yeah, that's right. We'll be publishing- so commits will the, simply fail. Commits will fail. You okay. will not be allowed to commit. You will not be allowed to MSC. The only thing that's allowed to write to that will be the Git to SVN mirror scripts that um, I've been testing in the background. Um, that will be publishing um, stuff to uh, that repository. And then 
All the normal mirrors will be followed from that. Git SVN will follow that. Um, sorry, SVN web will follow that, I should say. Um, and the all the new stuff will be at uh, the, uh, you know, our Git, our CGit instance that we'll be publishing initially, as well as GitHub, GitLab, whatever else we're mirroring to. And we'll also, since we're changing the hashes, we'll publish, hey, I have the old tree and I, from GitHub, what do I do now? And, and you know, stuff like that. And we'll, Ed and I will talk about all those details in our town hall in a couple of weeks. Thanks, Warner. Uh, as a open source project, we always try to contribute on a voluntary basis and uh, we try to contribute our time and effort towards the project. Sometimes uh, we are not enough, sometimes we need more volunteers. So uh, George, would you like to say something more about like how uh, uh, how we can yeah, include more developers and more uh, administrators for administering our project or having more codes or more uh, bug, busting more bugs into our project. So do you want to say something about it? I mean, sure, there's a there's kind of three, maybe three branches of that discussion. I mean, one of the things that Core is in part responsible for is um, recruiting and granting hats um, and trying to help to recruit to the various teams that make the FreeBSD project work. It's not like the core team can do everything. Sometimes it seems like, well, anyway, it's not like we can do everything. So uh, most people probably know we have a security team, we have a release engineering team, we have a ports manager team. Um, we have these various teams that work uh, to do not only technical, but administrative work to make the project work. Those teams always need to be refreshed because you know, volunteers show up and they have a lot of time and they're very excited. And then, you know, their life changes or something changes a job, they have a child, um, <clears throat> they work on other stuff. So one of the things uh, Core and the, the various teams are always looking for are people who are willing to step up and do more of the project's work. Um, definitely uh, Gordon on the security team, Gordon Tetlow on the security team is looking for more people to join the SEC team. I know Ports Manager is always looking for people. Um, release Engineering can always use some more help. So if people want, they can always reach out directly to the various teams which are listed in the, in the handbook. People are welcome to email me because I don't expect that even with this recording, 10,000 people email me saying they want to volunteer for a particular team. Uh, or they can email the core team and say, you know, well, where, where are we looking for help? Um, on the more general topic of recruiting more developers to the project, um, I mean, one of the things that, one of the ways in which we, uh, as a project grow is usually by our developers themselves. So I think it's important for, you know, people who work on the FreeBSD project, whether it's doc or ports or source or whatever part of the project and are contributing. You know, when you see someone who you think is someone you'd like to work with on a voluntary open source project, you should do whatever you can to get them interested in it. Because generally people are recruited by colleagues or friends or people they've come into contact with, or they're recruited because they've used the system at school or at work. Um, so it's, I think it's really important for, you know, our developers and, and that means everyone in the project to be looking for their replacements. Um, certainly, I don't want to be doing this forever because this is now all gray. So I try to find people with less of that to, to yeah, Warner does the same thing. People with less of that to, to contribute to the project. And I think it, it's really all of our responsibility to try and find who our replacements are going to be. Um, anyway, so that's kind of my, my pitch on uh, recruiting at the moment. Thanks, George. So uh, we are waiting for some questions, and I think that there are no uh, questions available in the IRC for us to answer. So in that case, if you'd like to add something, maybe we can add or uh, one more thing is like about uh, the discussing the proposed terminology changes we had a couple of uh, months ago. So. Uh, like, is there any updates, like what we are trying to do in the future? Like, 
in which side we are going or what what we have planned for anyone want to take on that So, so sorry, just to be clear, you're talking about the terminology changes we discussed a couple of months ago. Um, I, I don't think we can really say that we've made a lot of progress on that. Um, the, the ensuing discussion, uh, you know, resulted in, in a lot of internal discussion on the core team on the best way to, you know, get, get some sort of consensus. Um, there's a number of technical problems involved around backwards compatibility as well. Um, so there's there's still quite a few considerations that we that we uh, need to spend time on. I can't say we've made a lot of progress in that area, but it's definitely something that's still on core's agenda. Yeah, it's it's also something that'll probably be handled topically. Um, you know, this particular technology changed their terminology and their master docs to be uh, primary. So we might change the code to match the new. Um, information that is in the published standard um, on a case by case basis, but we wouldn't probably do a top to bottom tree sweep. Um, that's very disruptive. And uh, it's each individual context matters. And so we need to give thought to each individual thing. Um, so it, it will be um, more of a evolutionary process rather than a wake up one day and everything has changed process. Okay, thanks, Mark. Thanks, Warner. Uh, George, I think we have a question like, uh, where is help needed most urgently? So, <clears throat> I mean, if we're talking about teams, um, I mean, I would say that I would say that we don't have any particular team that we're, you know, we're down to the last contributor. Um, that has happened in the past with FreeBSD, but we are not in that situation now, which is good. Um, I mean, I think the teams that I mentioned uh, could all use some hands. One of the things that I've foolishly volunteered to do uh, for core is to to restart and get moving a QA team. So if people are interested in doing testing and working on testing code and working on how we test the system, they should email me directly and we will figure it out. Um, uh, certainly, Lewin could use some help on the CI team. He's been doing the majority of the work there. Um, uh, release engineering could use can always use some more hands. We have more things to release on. Uh, the ports group could use more hands. I know that tech team, which I'm also a part of, uh, could use more help because there are always things to go and, and uh, deal with in the security area. But I wouldn't say that there was any one team where we were looking, you know, that was in dire straits. Okay, thanks, George. So, uh... We have no more questions available for answering. So I think uh, that will be all for this office hour for today. We will try to arrange another office hour geared more towards the other part of the world, hopefully in the coming week or maybe the next. So up till then, stay with us. And thanks for watching this. Thanks for being with the previous project. So that will be all from here. Thank you, everyone.